Let's talk about HSRP VRRP and GLBP first of redundancy protocol. In the bottom picture, you see that there is a layer to access design, since from access to distribution connection is layer two, and our first stop gateway is on the distribution layer. That's why between the distribution switches is layer two connection, and above distribution, it's layer three. Uh, it can be core, it can be wide area network, so on and so forth. Now, in this design, spanning tree is used, and left left distribution switch is root switch. That's why from left and right access switch to right distribution switch links are blocked, and uh, left and right access to left distribution switch uplinks are forwarding now. Okay. Uh, let's talk about HSRP, BRRP and GLP on the top left and right pictures. Uh, it just shows us uh, the some features of, of these protocols. Okay, In the right it says transparent default gateway redundancy. What does this mean? HSRP and VRRP for the one virtual IP address assign one virtual MAC. Okay, once the uh, host send an ARP request, uh, the, the gateway will send the ARP response for the active HSRP or active VRRP device. Okay, it's working based on active and standby, and if active fails, standby device will be taking the responsibility. But GLBP is a different case. GLBP for the one virtual IP address, it will assign more than one virtual MAC and based on the ARP request, the ARP reply may be different. That's why the uh, different set of hosts, they will still use the same virtual IP, but different since different MAC address, their traffic will be forwarded to different devices. That's why if in this uh, bottom picture, if we are using GLBP, then both device at the data plane will be forwarding, but only one device on the control plane will be sending to the ARP request, ARP, uh, the answer for the ARP request, which is ARP reply. Uh, works basically like this. And what else? Virtual IP address uh, can also be a real address from the design point of view. I don't know how it would be important, but IETF standard definitely uh, would be one of the considerations. Maybe business requirement is to have some uh, standard protocol, then you should go with the VRRP. Otherwise, there is preemption enabled by default for the VRRP and not HSRP and GLDP, this also might be important. Why? Let's think about uh, the left switch is spanning tree root and uh, FHRP active. Let's think it's a HSRP and HSRP active, then the right distribution assume it's secondary root and uh, HSRP standby it will be. So, in case failure, normally HSRP and uh, spanning tree will be going to the right distribution switch and from the access to uh, left and right access to right distribution switch, links will be uh, going to forwarding state and the uh, left and right access to less di di distribution switch links will be uh, disabled or uh, the whatever protocol you are using there, uh, spinning tree, CST, uh, RSTP or MST, based on their protocols uh, definition. Okay, uh, in this case, now spinning tree root and HSRP active on the right distribution device. Uh, assume left device came back. Now, spinning tree by default uh, will converge back to left distribution. But HSRP, if you are not doing preemption, it will stay on the right, right distribution switch. Now, layer 2 gateway, you can think of the root switch. Layer 2 gateway will be on the left distribution, but layer 3 gateway will be on the right distribution. So, from access switch, let's say uh, the host 
traffic is coming to left access switch, it will go first to left distribution switch, then it will go to right distribution switch since the layer 3 gateway is there, and then go uh, northbound interface. Obviously, there is a suboptimal traffic here. We want to send uh, directly to the uh, layer 2 and layer 3 gateway on the same device we want. And it's uh, also uh, deterministic traffic we will have. It will uh, give us, from a troubleshooting point of view, it's beneficial. Uh, that's why you may want to preemption in this case. But preemption also is uh, actually some downtime you may require for the protocol to converge back. That's why maybe uh, it's trade-off. Anyway, let's say you decided to do preemption. There is also one another factor which is preemption delay. It's it's uh, very important. It's not only even important for the layer 2 to the layer 3 protocols. For the many other protocols, actually, this, this is called synchronization. And IGP to LDP or IGP to BGP. Uh, one protocol needs to follow the another protocol and convergence needs to be sequential. This is important. Think about it. It's spanning tree. Uh, if you preempt HSRP and HSRP already, let's say, uh, went to the left, left distribution, but spinning trees still not converge, left distribution switch is not uh, root switch yet, so uh, will be really a weird case there. So that's why you want to preempt HSRP after spinning tree converged. That's why on the preemption delay you can give uh, based on your work, you will understand that my spinning tree converge, let's say, uh, based on whatever protocol, by the way, uh, as we said before, CST, RSTP or MST, my spinning tree converge within 10 seconds. Okay, let me add preemption delay, 10 seconds. This might be important. What other thing? Maybe the uh, hello timers uh, from the design point of view also might be important. Uh, many of these protocols support fast hellos, uh, although fast hellos is not a good idea overall, since it's uh, processed as the general CPU. So you may want to check uh, maybe BFT, you may want to use that by directional forwarding detection. Uh, many of the pro uh, platform actually support it on the hardware, hard hardware offload uh, may be there, so you may want to consider. On the left one, uh, do we have any consideration for the, uh, maybe, yeah, track interface, preemption based on the interface might be. Uh, what else actually, for the HSRP, VRRP and GLBP compression, HSRP and VRRP, basically, we do odd and even VLAN separation. Like uh, VLAN 1357, okay, left distribution switch, I want to HSRP active, and 2468, I want right distribution active, and basically, uh, earlier what we said as well, uh, layer 3, HSRP needs to follow the spinning tree route. So if I want left uh, for set of VLAN, okay, 1357, uh, left distribution switch is if HSRP active, then root switch also uh, should be there. And for 2468, right distribution is FHRP active, so root switch for those VLANs will be on the right distribution switch. Okay, in this case, it, for the uh, VLAN 3, let's say, HSRP active on the left switch and spinning to the root also is left distribution switch, right? Okay, if somehow uh, the link to the left distribution switch, both link from both, both access to left distribution switch goes down or left distribution switch goes down, then what will happen? Right distribution will uh, take the responsibility. Okay, for all those VLAN, VLAN 3, let's say, 
all the user within the VLAN tree will be affected. 100% of those users will be affected. They will be uh, failed over to the right distribution switch. So they they might see, see that, that you will see the tra traffic drops. Okay. HSRP and for the, both HSRP and VRRP, this is the case. But GLBP is different beast. For the GLBP, now for that VLAN tree, you will use both left and right distribution switch as active. So in case left and right distrib left and right access uh, to left distribution switch link goes down or left distribution switch goes down scenario, now only the the users who are using the left distribution switch as their gateway will be effect affected. If uh, somehow you send the traffic, half of the traffic to left distribution switch, half of the right distribution, so you can say that only half of the users will be affected. This is also a very important design consideration. Okay, in this video we talked uh, HSRP, VRRP, GLVP and we compared them. Also, we talked about the HSRP, all these uh, first stop redundancy protocols and spinning tree interactions. Thanks for watching me.